Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages, and we are here at the home of the Gorons, Rolling Ridge. Now, the Gorons actually here have a little bit of trouble on their hands. Their elder is actually trapped under all those boulders. Uh, but don't the Gorons eat rocks? Couldn't they just, you know, couldn't he just eat himself out? Granted, and these are the same Gorons who, when Dodongo's cavern was covered, or blocked by boulders, were gonna starve because they couldn't get to their food supply of rocks. I, I don't know. Gorons, Gorons don't make much sense. They're kind of, not, I guess dumb. I guess they're a little bit of a dumb species. They're not as majestic as the Zora, or... I guess alluring as the Gerudo. They're not. They're. I mean, the Toke in this game actually are pretty dumb as well. Kind of just kind of doing their own thing. But the Gorons always kind of had that to an extent. To some extent. To some other extent, they're actually very proud species. Not really a warrior race either. Ah, the Gorons are weird. I think that's the best way to put it. The Gorons are weird. Anyway, because the Gorons need bombs or not any bomb, a bomb flower. I think they mentioned that. And if they didn't, they need a bomb flower. We're gonna go to the future. You would think, well, why would there be bombs in the future? Well, this is when the time stuff kind of gets into play. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. And yeah, the Great Moblin is here. And he's gonna play a role in... He plays a role in both... Oh, thank you, Goron. Uh, he plays a role in both of the Oracle games, but... I almost think I like him better here, maybe? I don't know. I, I guess I don't really have a preference, but he does. he's in both Oracle games. He's just a giant moblin, basically. We'll see him in this episode. I'm assuming. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to... I don't think it takes that long to get to the Great Moblin. Mm -hmm. don't, yeah. There's no there's no way it would take an entire episode just to get to the Great Moblin. If it did, I would be really surprised. Anyway. Um, what was I saying? Oh. So one thing about Rolling Ridge I, I want to mention is that for whatever reason it just feels like there's a lot of rooms in this, you know, in the Goron's caves and just in the mountain in general that are just pointless. And maybe there is a point and I just never figure it out. Or maybe it's a very minute point. But there's a lot of empty rooms you'll find in this mountain, more so than anywhere else. And you have random harpies here. We're actually somewhat almost done with all the harpies because there's still four more dungeons. So. Or, yeah, like only two more heart, two more full hearts from heart containers. But yeah, the uh, the the time thing. I, I was mentioning that the time time stuff kind of comes into here because I guess I'll explain it now. They they do explain it at some point, but and maybe the Gorons. I think if you talk to them, they explain it. But basically, the way it works is we came to the future and. They have bomb flowers because we brought bomb flowers. Basically, they have bomb flowers here. They have bomb flowers here because we brought bomb flowers to the past. So it's kind of a paradox in that the bomb flowers never existed until we gave them to the past after we got them from the future. It, it, it's cool. But the one problem I have with it is the way it works here is that the Elder Goron is. I don't. I want to say the. There's an event later on that I think is done differently than it's done here, and I could be wrong. Um, another leader of a race, and anyone who played this game knows what I'm talking about. There's another leader that you have to help out, and he... I, basically, the events haven't happened. Like, here, they already happened. We already had given the... the well, we haven't given the... Time. You know what? Screw it. Time. I can't... I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time even explaining, because... Time travel is is weird. It's fun weird, but it's good. It's weird. Yeah, I'm just wandering around here while I'm trying to explain time to you guys because I, that's what, again. It just feels like Rolling Ridge is just a whole bunch of random places to look. There's a lot to there's a lot to go, a lot of places to go in Rolling Ridge, but there's not a lot of point to the places you can go get get to. If that makes any sense. Okay, now here's an important thing. There's another tree. I think this is the last... I think it's the last, um, sea tree. For, you know, we'll get a new type of seed. But there's one more sea tree, and it's only available in the past because it's gone. But, uh, we can't get into the Great Moblin's Palace until we get that seed tree. 
so we'll have to go to the past. I'm gonna explore a bit, though. And the sea tree would actually be up here. But it is not, because... This is the future! The future is purple. Actually, well, I guess it's kind of purple-blue. Yeah, it is purple. Purple fits the future. Everything just dies to my noble sword. Well, almost everything. There are some enemies that are a little bit more tricky. Okay, that's the Great Moblin's Palace. I want to go to the right. I hate these guys. Because there's... Well, with the switch hook, they're not too difficult. I just am lazy and never switch it on. But the thing that's tr annoying with them is they... And I think a great fairy. But the thing that's annoying with them is you can't really kill them with the sword. And then they move and... You think you can break rocks with your sword now. So you'd think that you could... You know... Kill them with the rocks. Anyway, portal. Let us activate... Or, let's activate... It is activated. Let's go in it and... We are now in the past. Again, I like... I wouldn't say time, tra time travel is done perfect in this game, but I find it's done a lot more successfully than... Again, I felt like in Ocarina of Time, time travel just didn't... was just kind of there. It didn't really feel like it was... As much as it was the title of the game, it didn't seem like it was as much a... Oh, hello, Maple. I always think... I always think it's not Maple. I think it's Syrup, but it's not. It's Maple. Ooh, Ring. Ooh, I think I can get it, too, because I'm in a good position. Wow, barely. She's fast. She actually gets faster, um... But she probably should actually be faster not too long. She gets upgrades, basically. So she'll get even faster and more tricky and have more tricks up her sleeve. And what is up here? Oh, see... Uh, okay, the soil's up there, I believe. But yeah, I, I just... Time's done a lot better in this game. Yeah, like, right here, there's... What's the point of this room? I... Maybe there... I don't know, it's a skull, kind of, like, with the eyes, but, no, not even that, because it doesn't have the teeth. But, yeah, there's, I was talking about, the, like, the shape it was making, but, yeah, it's a pointless room. Anyway, pigs of seeds, I love these, but I always never use them, simply, well, except when you need them, but, basically, they make you go faster, and I always forget to use them. It's just, I don't know, I don't really see, it, it a lot of the items in the game, like, again, pigs of seeds, can make, t uh, the game easier for you. Does it make you go faster? But I don't know, I just never, I just kind of blank a lot of times and just not using them. Either out of pure laziness or because I, yeah, I don't think there's anything down there. Um, don't really feel like switching the items or I just don't think about it. But it's not like it makes it that much easier and make a big difference. There are other Zelda games, I think, that, that that's the case where there's items that would make the game easier and you just don't bother to switch them onto your main items section because then you'd have to bother playing with the menu. Anyway, let's go into the Great Mama's Palace. Now that we have the pig's seeds, we can actually enter it. So now we will eat them, and I think we eat them. Okay, and... But, well, oh, crap! I didn't think the last one was going to fall either. I thought it was just going to be, like, you know, one in the staircase. Oh, crap. F fire! Ah! Bats. Well, keys, technically. I call them bats because it's easier to say bats than keys, but they are keys. I know a lot of the classic Zelda enemy names. I don't know as much of the... Ow. Ah! Okay, this sucks. Damn, I suck. <laughs> I can't... Okay, hang on. One, two... No, wait. Ah. Screw it. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna die. Holy crap. Okay, no. Wait, focus. Just one, two, three... Or was it two? Well, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> I made it. Now, my focus here is to not die. Dying would be bad. Dying is not fun. I don't think there is a video game out there where dying is preferred. I could be wrong about that. It'd be kind of interesting. Ooh, what's this? Oh, okay, well, I guess I was good I got down here. I got a ring. I almost feel like you can actually access this place later, even if the... F basically, the... Well, you'll see. Good hearts. But I almost feel like you don't have to come down here to get that ring. I think there's another way to get it, if I remember correctly. Wait, why am I... 
Why was I using the switch hook? I could have just used my sword. Well, whatever. I wasn't even thinking there. Because I'm because I, I don't know, I think it's cooler to use the switch hook too, I guess, to some extent. My mind does things. Okay, cheap cheeps. I feel like there's cheap cheeps here. The one thing that I guess kind of to an extent, I think there's also yeah, there's Mario enemies in Minish Cap 2, a lot of the Game Boy uh Zelda games. But I kinda almost wish they were only resigned to Link's Awakening, because Link's Awakening it, it was a dream, so it made more sense for there to be Mario enemies here, whereas in this case it's just kinda like well, why are they here? But then again, on the other hand, there was Chain Chomps in um there was Chain Chomps or Bow Wows as they're called, I think, in this game. In Link to the Past. So it's not like Link's Awakening was the first game to have Mario enemies. It was the first to have, I think, Cheap Cheeps and Goombas, though. I had Kirby, too, actually. And then there was Princess Peach on a postcard. But she wasn't an enemy, she was just on a postcard. I think it was a postcard, I don't know. Anyway, let's try that again with less falling into pits. Didn't mind falling the first time, but I'd rather not do it twice. And I should be able to make it as long as I just don't... Okay, no, stop hugging the wall. Okay, there we go. And this section, I believe, is kind of pointless. Alright then. So yeah, the Great Moblin has been hoarding the bomb flowers for some reason. Actually, I'm not sure if... I don't know if he's always had the bomb flowers, if he was the one who introduced them, or... And it what You know, it wasn't us bringing them to the Rolling Ridge that brought them. Maybe we did change... We do change the past, because if we bring the bomb flowers to Rolling Ridge, then the Great Moblin wouldn't have brought them, it would have been us. But then there's already a legend that we helped the Gorons out at this point, I believe, too. That's the other thing. They already... The, the Gorons already have this legend that we helped them, I believe. Anyway, yeah, basically here you just, as you can see, you just throw the big bombs at the Great Mob one. Not hard. Timing's a little tricky. You basically want to throw when it starts flashing. But, you know, just time it right. Not too hard of a... Ow, that hurt. Not too hard of a boss. Like, it's kind of a unique... I do like... The great mob one here. He's kind of a unique boss, and he kind of looks a little like wart somewhat in his design. He has the cape and the uh, amulet, and he's green, but he's a mob one. But he's, he is reminiscent of Wart from Mar Super Mario Bros. 2, and also he's in uh, Link's Awakening as well. But yeah, we succeeded in blowing up his castle. You'd think there would be no bomb flowers left, but. So, yeah, his castle's gone. I actually think that staircase leads to where we went down in the. Uh, to get the ring. But yeah, we helped them out. Alright. So yes, we have a bomb flower, and now we can go back to the past and give it to the Goron so they can save their elder, so that we... so that time works out in the long run. So let's do that. But yeah, see, they already... I think this is what I was getting at before What if, before when I got confused. They already have a legend about us helping them out. Later on, there isn't a legend already existing of someone helping out the leader. Basically, the leader isn't... You, you'll see. But here, it, they almost implied the leader is, is already currently saved, meaning that we had saved him in the past, which would make sense. But in a different section... We have to do the event before things are changed, whereas here they're, it's already predestined. So I don't know. I just I like it here actually better somewhat because it's cooler. And what do I have to do here? Oh wait, no. Okay, this is cool. Um, you actually have to use. And yeah, this is the. I just wanted to double check to see if that was where the ring was. But you actually have to use the Pegasus seeds in conjunction with the Rock's feather. And it'll give you more jumping speed. I actually like this. It's really cool that they allow you to do this. Okay, if I would not overshoot my jump, or not over, or 
fail my jump, I guess. I don't really even need the pegs of seeds, actually, though. I, I, the rock's feather is tricky to use. It's like, sometimes you are going to overshoot your jump or, like, undershoot it. You just, it's, it's tricky to use in this game. It's tricky to use, especially in this game. I think it's the other games, too, but for a reason I get... Oh, wait, I don't want to go up here. That's where the dungeon is. So, you'll be seeing me do that again later. Anyway, we are going to go back to the past, because we do need to save the Goron Elder. We actually need to save the Goron Elder so we can get to the dungeon. If you were wondering what the purpose of all this was, besides just helping someone out, uh, the only way to get to that dungeon is to help the Goron Elder. And Tech Tights, leave me alone. Die. Die as well. Ow. I don't like you either. Though I like the bush ones better than the rock ones, because at least the bush ones you can kill. They might trick you, but they're at least killable. Well, you can kill the rock ones too, but they're, again, they're harder to kill than the... or krill. Kill than the bush ones. Die. Die. Um... Can I go through... Yeah, I'm assuming I can get to the uh, Goron Elder from here. I'm not sure if there's anything else down here. Okay, yeah, there's, there's an entirely pointless staircase there. Oh, it's not... Well, no, because you need to get back up. And yeah, I love all these Gorons. I don't even know what's going on down there. You're just like, ugh, shut up. I want to sleep. It's like your elder's dying. You know, if all of them helped out, they could easily move those boulders, I think. But no, they had to have some boy come and help them out. <laughs> I guess he's dead. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like, they don't really even care. Oh, come on, there's... that sucks. Why... why isn't there a way to get over there? There's no reason not to... I... don't even... Okay, well, I can get back down there, I think, from jumping down the cliff, but... I don't know why they didn't allow us to go the full way. They allow us to do that in the past. Or, not past, the future. This is the past. Okay, and now we can go save the Goron Elder. I think I gave it... Oh, here, yeah, automatic cutscene. Hey! Is that one of the legendary bomb flowers? Yes, it is. Uh, maybe, I guess. Here, have it. So, yeah, now they can save the Elder. Again, don't know why they couldn't a anyway, but... The bomb flower explodes all those rocks, and... Goron Elder's okay, and he kind of looks like Darunia, or... Like, all the... He has the beard, like all the Goron Elders. Kind of cool looking, I guess. And if we talk to him... Yes, I did. This is the shiny key. So now we have a key to the dungeon. And now we can go up to the dungeon, and that's pretty much it. This is probably, in terms of... Yeah, this is probably the shortest distance between dungeons. Because pretty much all you have to do to get to the fifth dungeon is do this, and it doesn't take that long. Whereas, third dungeon had a ton of stuff to do. I guess the second dungeon... Yeah, second dungeon had quite a bit, too, because you had to go in the past and all that stuff. Um... Third, or fourth dungeon had all of the Talus Peak stuff. I think it was Talus Peak. And here, um, in this dungeon, it was. All right, I know I said what this dungeon. We've seen what this dungeon was. Um, the later dungeons actually take a little bit longer too. So I'd say this is the shortest amount of stuff you have to do before getting to a dungeon. Besides maybe the first dungeon, but I'd argue the prequel or the all the prologue type stuff kind of counts. So now you have to go back to the future. And let me go see the Great Fairy to get healed. Because I could always use some extra health. Thank you. And now I need to go through that entire... Well, it wasn't that tricky, but that gauntlet of Pegasus seeds and stuff. I 
actually gonna go grab a few more. I don't think I need. Oh wait, what am I? This is the future. I'm, I get confused with time. Anyway, right, I have plenty, and I can find them in pots. The pigs of seeds. I have I have forty. What was I even th plenty? And plus I have, well no the seed shooter I wouldn't be able to use the ones in those because you couldn't fire them on yourself I don't think. Careful. Careful. And there we go. So next time, this fifth dungeon, which is uh, I think the crown dungeon. Yes, so see you guys then.